Hi, and welcome to Live with Singular. My name is Catherine, and I'll be your host for today. We've got Travis here behind the scenes uh, doing the switching. And today, Travis and I are going to be joined by Brian Ring, who is going to demo Amagi's flagship Cloudport channel playout software, um, which is compatible with Singular Graphics. Brian is Senior Director of News and Sports Market Development for Amagi, and we're looking forward to having him on. But before we dive in, I'm just going to run through some of the latest interesting things here at Singular, which is really all about our awesome service providers. Uh, service provider CE8 supported the BBC World Feed coverage of the physically disabled Rugby League World Cup with a custom rugby graphics package built and delivered with less than five days notice of the first match. And those of us in the live broadcast graphics world understand that this time frame from custom concept to delivery is incredibly fast. We congratulate CE8 for the for using Singular to help bring the league the coverage that it deserves. Um, second, service providers and Singular early adopters, Double Take Sports, were winners at the Lord Mayor's Business uh, Awards in Brisbane, Australia for business innovation. Um, they're defining completely new standards for modern live productions with a focus on top-notch, streamlined, remote, and sustainable live production. Um, all while delivering a very high-end viewing experience. They're harnessing Singular as the graphics part of their tool set to deliver these outstanding cutting-edge solutions for their customers. So with that, let's bring on Brian for a bit more about Cloudport before we actually jump into a live demo. Hey, Brian. Thank you, Catherine. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Thank you for having me. Really wonderful to be here. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Cloudport? Yeah, before we sort of dive in. Sure, absolutely. So uh, first of all, again, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I've known about Singular for many years. Full disclosure, did some work for Singular in the past. You'll see a little bit of that in the demo. Uh, but I do need to back up, just give a quick level set about what Amagi does and who we are. We essentially, if you look at the value chain here, it's about create, manage, deliver, and monetize content. But what's missing there is the words streaming linear. So this is a new mm -hmm. business model that's skyrocketed as a result of the maturity in live streaming and in the maturity of the CTV OEMs that have now uh, put together pretty, pretty solid uh, smart TV interfaces so that you can dive in, uh, buy your TV, open the box, hook it up to Wi-Fi and have literally thousands of channels. So companies like Samsung TV Plus, Vizio, Watch Free, those are examples of EPG lineups in streaming li linear. And um, so that is one of the key strengths of Amagi is that we serve uh, broadcast networks, content owners and streaming platforms themselves with live linear channel creation, distribution and monetization. So for example, we'll send streams from any of these content players to the likes of Samsung TV Plus, Peacock, YouTube TV. But it's also important to note, we also mm -hmm. manage the creation of channels for companies like Samsung TV. So that's just a first level set of what it is that we do in the cloud master control and channel playout domain, as well as what is referred to as the free ad supported streaming TV domain. So <clears throat> with that, um, do you have additional questions? Should I cover additional items or shall we just dive into the demo? I think we should just dive in. I mean, I'm curious to see how this sort of looks and works. Absolutely. Okay. so. <clears throat> I'm now gonna jump into the interface. I'm also gonna make a quick change uh, so that you can actually see. Um, when you look at this interface, you'll see on the upper left-hand corner, you'll see myself next to uh, a gal named Sarah Cott. She's actually now at The Hill, which is also a customer of Amagi's. And what you're gonna see behind me is the playout of that preview window um, in a VLC player. This is just uh, for the demo itself so that you can see some of the items that I'll be uh, manipulating on screen. Um, right below cool. that, you'll see this asset here that says coming up. And so if you want to preview the next asset that's coming up, that's how you're going to do that right there. And then if you look at the top of the page, I'm uh, clicking into a blue bar that's going to turn purple as I do so. 
And that's the current asset that's playing. And you see uh, it gets darker as the asset continues to run. So you have a sense of where you are in the playlist. Uh, now, okay. if you wanted to change something in this playlist on the last on a last minute basis, that is something that we can do and we support. Not all Cloud Master Controls can change a playlist uh, quite as easily as this, where you basically hit edit, you open your media library folder, and uh, in that folder, you'll see the ability to toggle through media, live assets, so we can schedule live, we can go live in an ad hoc context. I'll talk more about that in a second. We can create mini playlists to make the management of smaller form assets uh, a little easier. And then we can also uh, schedule secondary uh, events known as SCUDI triggers so that you know exactly when a commercial break mm -hmm. is happening. Yep. You can also um, drag and drop assets into the playlist as an example. I'll do that right here. And, uh, and after you do that, you'll go ahead and hit publish and that's gonna go ahead and, and refresh the playlist and publish it. So uh, next part of the demo, we're gonna dive into the media library. This is where all of the assets are going to sit within your Cloud Court instance. And uh, you'll see uh, the basics here in the video section. We also have graphics. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a second. Audio, rescue assets. These will play when there's a hole in the playlist. And so you can actually hmm. programmatically uh, fill this bucket with a specific kind of rescue asset to make the, um, in case there is a gap in the, in the playlist, uh, that viewing experience more seamless and have some content in it but let me just go back to videos really That's quickly fine. so we'll ingest videos and one of the things that we have to do in the fast context is we have to in study uh we have to insert breaks or segments and so inside of cloudport we encourage soft segmentation of video and so for example right here you see a little kind of editorial interface in which you can go ahead and add segments and save them um, you also have the metadata. There's none associated with this asset because uh, I didn't upload a CSV or an XML, but various ways to get metadata into the system. We do have a number of QC checks. These are automatically built into the system. So you don't have to buy an external QC uh, checker to make sure the content is ready to go and ready to play. Um, right. We have some ingest data and then some asset ID, title, category. These are also things that you can change as a user using the system. Now I'm gonna dive into the graphics. So we do support a wide range of graphics uh, in, the, in the cloud port system. And that includes native graphics, which are just target files you can place in the system, move them around, um, add data to them. But one of the most exciting things uh, that we do is we support all HTML5 uh, uh, vendors. And uh, Singular for many years has been uh, one of my favorites. Um, the Singular platform has just a great canvas to build out creative. And then the other thing that's a huge strength is uh, Singular's API. And so um, you'll see a little bit of that in the, in the demo in a second. Uh, but we have a very, uh, Singular has a very um, solid, robust API. We can basically set up graphics anywhere on the screen. We can hit that API to turn that graphic on. Singular enables all kinds of video effects and trans transformations of that asset. And then we can also do an API call to pull that off. And so once you put that URL, you package it up, you upload it into the system, and it will basically land here. And you can see a couple of them here. Here's the, the BR Singular asset, which is a package that I'm going to show you in just a second. There's, there's nothing rendered here, which is why it's purple. Uh, here's another package that I'm going to show you. This one has a QR code in it. So now um, heading back to the playout, and I want to show you really quickly a couple of these uh, tricks with respect to graphics. However, before I do that, I want to share with you one additional feature, which is the ability to go live in an ad fashion. So I'm going to go up the right-hand corner of the page. I'm going to hit that take live button. You'll see it says join in next 15 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and leave that up. Um, this NA Media primary asset, you can actually preview this as a live. Asset. This one is just, it's really a fake live channel from German public broadcaster. I'm going to go ahead and proceed and take that live. And we just wait a few seconds. The first thing you'll see is it pops up in that lower corner. Uh, left corner called input source mm -hmm. so you now see that live feed there which is great and as soon as that 15 seconds are up you see it just now 
popped up to the upper left hand corner of the screen um, right now. And if we then step back and uh, switch over here, you can see on the screen, this is that live German news mm -hmm. broadcaster. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into the cloud port and I'm going to go ahead and play one of those graphics that I alluded to earlier. Here is this BR singular graphic. I'm going to give it a duration of 10 minutes. I'm going to hit play. And then within seconds, you will actually see that overlay, that uh, lower third pop up on the screen. And there it is. It says yep. B ring report live with singular ring <laughs> present Amagi cloud port. And then what's really cool, and this is inside the singular system, uh, so you, you, you won't be able to, to see this uh, very well. But if I pull up my singular control interface, you can see that I can actually do uh, certain things. So, for example, I can turn on the lower left hand, uh, the, sorry, the upper left two line, and you'll see the local nice. weather and it's hot uh, with a little emoji there. <laughs> Take that off the screen. I can go down to the Brian Ring reporting. Uh, and change that to from Bree Ring reports to Brian Ring reports. This is gonna. Can we see this in full screen, screen, Travis? I just want to see Brian's feed because it's cool what you're doing. There we go. Yeah, Brian Ring reports. Yeah, we do. So the interface here, the 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 preview window and the window underneath, these are actually WebRTC deliveries for the operator of this platform, right? So um, we all know LL. Uh, so, oh, sorry, we all know HLS. Uh, has quite a bit of delay. And so for an operator controlling the system, we do use WebRTC and that's how we maintain nice. really tight latencies. Um, so people think about latency, you've got the ingest latency, you got the delivery ABR latency. Mm. There's a lot of stuff also in the middle that you got to pay attention to so that when you're applying graphics, for example, in a sports context, uh, you know, you might be looking at a player who's walking off the field, you got to make sure that you're syncing up your movements, your, your operations of that platform with whatever it yeah. is that's happening on field. So that is uh, just one little example of one singular uh, graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that one down and I'm gonna pull up one more just for fun. This really does showcase the power of the singular platform um, as much as anything. This is a, a, a customized use of singular, um, which includes a QR code and it looks like I have so give me just a two seconds here should be able to you got to take it on air on. with the exactly yeah. um, so um, this is again using that control interface on the back on the back end but there what you is. can see then it popped up right behind me is this QR code and uh, so this is pretty fun. I can open up my camera. And I just click on that. And it brings up this interface, which is essentially a little quiz. You can do pick them or polls and trivia. I could submit that. And what you're going to see here, if you look closely, is this chart here, which again is a singular widget, very easy to pull this together. In polls and trivia, it just moved up. I'm going to hit it again so that you can actually see the gray bar and you can customize all of the colors here. It's a little hard to tell can, but I, from our end, but yeah, it's, yeah, we get the point. Oh, so one of the things I just hit an so there's an on the screen. It's going to pop up right here. So that's kind of fun. Just trying nice. to highlight what's on the screen there. So yeah. <laughs> um, so that is the basics of uh, the graphics of portion. And um, as you can imagine, with, H with HTML5 graphics and with the singular platform, there's really uh, no limit to the kinds of things you can do, whether you put place the uh, graphics in the upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right. You can um, easily manipulate these uh, graphics, even if you're not a designer. And so that's a really important part of our value prop. I want to say one more thing. This is a, a, a really exciting uh, portion of Cloudport as well. I'm actually going to go over now into the live playout. Uh, this is a really fascinating new product. We are building this product essentially um, uh, as, as for, with an anchor customer. It's one of the digital aggregators of sports streaming rights globally. It's a company that has 
a few events during the week and then weekend comes and it explodes. You can have up to 50 parallel events. And so um, there are a lot of live streaming platforms today that you can spin up and spin down. Most of those systems are based on calls like RTMP. And most of those systems mm -hmm. that have that spin down live streaming capability do not have a critical component of functionality, which is known as master control. That's what you see here in this report. And one of the key things that master control is in charge of is monetization. It's insert, it's mm -hmm. reading the study signals, knowing when to insert an ad break. And in the case of the interface I'm about to share, even the ability to insert an ad break in real time. So the example here, let's say an event going on, you need to have a side break in case something happens on the field. It could be an injury or a penalty, an overtime, a pitching mm -hmm. change, whatever that might be, create a break, you might you would have done this ahead of time, uh, but it doesn't need to be done uh, that far ahead of time. But let's say take this Nike ad as as, as just one example. I'm going to drop drag and drop this Nike ad over here. And so now um, you can imagine if I was in a live show, uh, if this wasn't a newscast, let's say it's a sporting event, and someone gets injured on the field, they're down. We hope they're okay. But what we want to do is go to a break. So we're going to go to this blue play button. This is what we call the red button workflow. Uh, but the button's not red. It's blue in this case. And we're just <laughs> going to hit that play button. And you're going to see really quickly, you see how, how fast and responsive we're now into this 60-second uh, mm -hmm. ad uh, right yet. And so you can also insert graphics and study signals as easily. This is what we call our shot box feature within Cloudport and also uh, a brand new button bank here, take next loop so that you can have a, a real time control of what is on that feed. Um, and, you know, also do things like switch and, and manipulate various feeds. By the way, this system is now able to handle 12 uh, simultaneous redundant feeds. It's moving to 30 next wow. year and eventually wow. we'll get to a hundred feeds. It's a combination of those live streaming That's platforms, crazy. the spin up and down infrastructure with the, the video feed orchestration, with the channel playout control, the scuddy breaks, the graphics and the standby. Yeah. And so that- So what is, you just showed us, the shot box thing, that's, that sort of can be thought of as just a, you know, get something on air fast when you've got something in your live event and you need to cut away. Um, that's super cool. Yeah, exactly right. And, and and the key difference also between the two interfaces is that this this playout page is really all about 24-7 channel playout. That that 24-7, mm -hmm. you know, 365 playout of assets and ensuring that all of it is filled with commercial breaks, all of it was filled with content. That's a particular interface that, that has lots of density to it. Over in that live mm -hmm. playout tab, that interface is specifically just for that two hour event, that three hour event. Mm -hmm. It gives uh, it. A, a lot cleaner interface to do those kinds of real time manipulations. Not a cloud production system just yet, uh, but some something of a, of a convergence, I would say, between a production system and a master control system. And again, all in the cloud, which enables this particular sports customer to have a spin up, spin down uh, element, which is, of course, the core benefit of cloud. Um, but yet have that channel play out mm -hmm. maturity um, within that context. It seems like you guys have a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, um, like a one -stop it's pretty shop. impressive. What do you think, Travis? Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a one-stop shop, you know. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's it's an amazing development. I mean, from from my perspective, I've been in the TV business uh, for a long time, over 20 years. And like I, I, I tell people, I came into the back half of the pay TV bonanza, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, this is really uh, a time, you know, last five years in which channel play out per se, we, we, a lot of folks in the business analysts that cover the business thought that channel play out was a mature category. Uh, but then along comes Pluto mm -hmm. TV, Tom Ryan puts out these, uh, basically these HLS playlisted channels, um, which are just already pre-encoded VODs. They string them together. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, you have a brand new discovery that people are still 
just leaning back and watching TV. That behavior is not gone away, notwithstanding everybody's mm -hmm. uh, desire to be, you know, direct to consumer and ad free and everything else. There's something about, and I have data to support. There are a lot of people that, for example, do do some form of background watching of TV, whether it's sports or yeah. news or whatever it might be. Something catches your attention, then you tune in. Um, and so just the idea of a live linear channel where you're scheduling for the days, for the day part. I wake up, I want my news. It's midday, I've got, you know, whatever, uh, maybe there's new sports events that are starting or evening, you know, I'm, I'm home to relax, catch up, veg out, you know, at prime time. So there are these different, um, you know, daily habits that we have. And uh, I like to link, I, I like to think of the word linear as just nothing more than sort of that daily life uh, schedule. And so what we're finding in the fast channel space, uh, or like I say, streaming linear, is that, that that linear channel curation is is actually a fantastic tool for discovery, for extending the length of tune, uh, and so forth. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say that, that linear, um, content is something that is, you know, you, even if you're not paying attention to it, you know, constantly, it's it's something that's nice to have for an environment, whether it's, you know, in your own home or, I don't know, at a, a sports bar or some, whatever it is. So I, I would agree with you. It, it just doesn't seem like that is going to go away. I mean, people put playlists on on YouTube, for example, but it's not the same. It's not curated uh, content. So yeah yeah i mean and one of the other things that i like to say an important note and a differentiator between uh from us and, and, and our competitors is that um you, you can uh, do what tom ryan did for pluto and what i call hls playlisting these these vod assets that get strung together like you're mentioning for youtube etc uh but what's missing in that um is in in a what i call a real channel context would be mm -hmm. any type of crawl any type of ticker mm -hmm any type of real time or programmatically embedded yeah. graphic. And so, um, I mean, those are things that really uh, shine for us, Cloudport, in our ability to handle live and uh, VOD assets in, in a playlist in a disciplined fashion that could be, changes could be made literally minutes in advance that not every master control system can handle that type of use case. And Singular's ability to just, you know, create a, a whole range of templates that you can then bring fresh graphics to on a weekly basis on a monthly basis don't have to reprogram singular don't have to redo the templates and you can have a completely different live real-time ticker by the way uh that api that i talked about earlier also enables a tremendous amount of data parsing and input so that um, I didn't show you this, but you can actually, for example, in that application, you can actually send a comment directly to the screen. You can also this Twitter and, and send them directly yeah. to the stream. So there's a million ways really to engage audiences using that QR code second screen format. That's one of the reasons I fell in love with the singular tool, uh, what, four or five years ago. Yeah, I, I, you make a good point. I mean, even with VOD assets, it's there's always gonna be that element um, in your guys's context of, of something live, consistently live throughout the entire watching experience. And that's that graphics layer. Um, so yeah, yeah and I, I talk, from... one thing I do talk about is, is the ability, for example, if you're a news broadcast, you've had a news story that's on, maybe it's a, you know, um, you know, kidnapping or uh, uh, shooting, or, I mean, these are depressing topics, all of them, but that's something that might've <laughs> happened. You might've aired a story on that like five, six hours ago in the middle of a news day. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, now you have a way of updating that with a data feed so that you can uh, explain to the viewer, and I think this is really important, something that not, not everybody does very well is, you know, that this app, this was recorded earlier, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, since then, you know, five suspects have been found and, you know, tracked down, whatever it is. So you're actually giving a sort of a simulated live uh, um, or a near live yeah. sort of uh, display. And I think that's a very powerful thing. When I say live, go live, a lot of people think I'm talking only about, you know, having anchors, having guests, the people, the, yeah. the production. Live can also be just that data feed, right? And I think that is a really mm -hmm. powerful concept to help drive uh, length of tune in the fast channel context. Yeah, definitely. It's very cool. Uh, Travis, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, yeah, just... Uh... 
won so far. Oh, okay. I'm send it to you. Um, yeah, I think they're wondering just um, oh, the process of uploading assets into the cloud platform. Yeah, yeah, great question. So um, a couple of things. I mean, in inside the demo, if we move to the media library, we do have a way to upload assets within uh, w within the user interface, which is right here, and you hit that upload button. Um, the other way that people will commonly do is MRSS feeds, which we can we can um, run those uh, whatever frequency you like. We also do have a JSON API if you want to update assets that way. And then uh, finally, um, you know, one of the simplest ways is just to drop assets into an S3 bucket, which uh, a mm -hmm. lot of companies are very familiar with that workflow now. And so it's just a matter of dropping the assets into the bucket. Once they get at, and, and you can drop uh, the uh, metadata as well in an XML file. Uh, we also accept CSVs. If you are using a planning system like a wide orbit or a Mediagenics, those uh, often have what's called a BXF standard for um, how these playlists are assembled and, and uh, documented. And so we can do we can ingest that as well. Um, in terms of formats, MXF uh, TS files are great. Uh, no matter what you input or uh, upload into the system, um, we, we, we can transcode and prep as well. So that's also uh, something that the system will do. If you need fast turn, we typically recommend that the asset come into the system already prepared for playout. Of course. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, we w I guess I'll just say a few other things that we haven't uh, talked about. Um, so we, we do have um, another system called Thunderstorm. That's an SSAI system, server-side ad insertion. Uh, and so we're doing a lot in the domain of advertising, helping to monetize all those breaks effectively. Uh, you know, first of all, playing within the waterfall of our publishers, right? So we're optimizing the re ad requests that come in and trying to make sure that all of our piping and plumbing is um, highly uh, precise because the, the amount of time that you have to put a commercial in and then the length of that commercial, which they're not always exactly 30 seconds, you have to start to, to sort of optimize those things in order your fill rates up so that every ad you see, you want to fill as much of those as possible. Um, industry standard rates are anywhere from uh, 60 to 80 percent, but we, we often see uh, fill rates higher than that into the 90s and 93, 94 percent. So we're always the entire ad industry, really, the CTV ad tech stack is trying to get those fill rates up. And then we are also in a great position. We have the, the metadata from these assets. So we know what genre it is, uh, what the, the mood of the content is. We, we can do the analysis on the video and, uh, and trigger ads that way. The other thing that's important with respect to our ad capabilities um, you know, most of that programmatic stuff happens in the SS, SSAI HLS domain, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, real-time bidding and real-time auctions, things like that. But with sports providers, um, and I mentioned we're, we're working with one right now that's a very large aggregator. Uh, they, they really love things like the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, graphics where you might mm -hmm. have, um, you know, the live feed squeezes down um, and then an ad would play yeah. uh, for, the bulk, yeah. for the bulk of the screen. So those are also things that we can do inside the cloud port system, and then uh, that gets monetized downstream in the HLS domain. Uh, but doing it strictly in the HLS domain, not easy. So we're, we're really in an interesting position uh, in terms of uh, bringing out innovative new ad formats as well. And by the way, I, I'd be remiss not to mention that even Singular could be used very easily as a way to deliver uh, overlay graphics, which is one of the things that um, many publishers are looking to do. Yeah, I, I feel like I see new new types of sort of ad delivery, um, new inventions all the time. Yeah, they're always trying to find it's, new it's ways to wild. get ads on the screen. That's for sure. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but you know, it it can end up being a better viewing experience for the yeah. audience as well. So it's a win-win win sometimes. Yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> I mean, it's it's funny because there's always lots of discussion around these kinds of things. I mean, consumers don't like ads in general. Uh, we we've got to work as a TV business to make them as um, as palatable as humanly yeah, possible, absolutely. and that that's the bottom yeah. line. Um, whether whether you like them or not, we we got to figure out a way <laughs> to get them uh, in there. And yeah, you know, especially for things like news, you know, there's really a very low willingness to pay for news. We saw with the CNN Plus. 
I mean, maybe that would have worked, but mm. there, there was a lot of skepticism about that. And I've spoken with folks, uh, plenty of them in the news business, uh, Sharif Al, uh, Abel uh, at Live Now from Fox, for example, who you know are somewhat mm. passionate about the idea that it needs to be free, that the news needs to be free and available. It's part of uh, the way uh, we we run a healthy democracy and so forth. So I, I think that ad supported piece of it is is always uh, is always often discussed and and debated. And but uh, the fact is, it's a reality of the business. Yep. If you want to keep it free, yep, <laughs> that would work. All right, cool. So, Thanks, Brian. This was this was really cool yeah. to see. Um, yeah, it's been been very, great having very you on. Impressive. Yes. Yeah, Travis awesome. is going to want his hands on uh, uh, some login information, I'm sure, <laughs> after this. Um, we'll talk about it later. But um, this has been great. Thank you for coming on. Um, hopefully, we can get you guys on another stream next year. It's coming into the end of the year. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, yeah. everyone. Love to do it. And thanks, everybody. And uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm brian.ring at amagi.com. And I'd be glad to take your questions offline as well. All thanks, right. guys. Bye, guys.